Welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. This is episode 13 of the Carl Goldberg Ultimate 10-300 biplane build and part 5 of the Lost Foam Wing Experiment. So far it's coming along really good. Uh, still have to put the center braces and the top spar in. Top spar first of course. And I have this idea I'm gonna, I'm gonna unpin it after I'm done with that and and pin down my trailing edges keep my forward shim on and all the spar shims and I'm gonna flip this wing and glue the glue the uh, trailing edge on with it flipped with the with the top of the wing cradle on weighted uh, I'll explain more about that when we get to it but in the meantime, we're going to do the top spar and this center reinforcement stuff. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And please like and share my videos. I'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to do this one half of it at a time, of course. So I have my metal piece here. It's going to provide me my 90 degrees from the center line here because I want this end to end up on that center line perfectly before I put the other one in. And we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, sanding just to make sure that this spar drops in just perfectly. I don't want to have to tweak it in any way unless it's a warp that this spar is straight so whatever I have to do to these notches to make that spar drop right in is what I'm gonna do so we'll start with the center because it's gonna be directly over so that's gonna be my first perfect spot and I'll eyeball it as I go down the wing so far so good and here's one that needs a little sanding so we'll just take this little sanding stick and just give this one a little bit of a tweak, hopefully without breaking anything. And we'll put it back. Now I'm also going to have to put the bevel on the end of this before I'm just getting all these ribs straightened out first. Still need some taken off. I don't want to crush that that rib. You want to be careful doing this because you don't want to break any of these things. This six pound wood is very soft, so you want to not do anything to ruin it.
So now I'm going to sight down that spar. Okay, so they're in. They're good. I'm going to take it back off. Make my bevel. I'm going to sand the bevel. Using my permagrit. We'll keep sand until it's perfect. And that's about as perfect as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to push it in and we'll start gluing. I buy these tips by the hundred so that I have plenty.
Things coming together. I want to make sure that this rib is 90 degrees exactly because it's going to form my, my main tip. And I'm only putting glue on the inside of it. Always save your scraps. All right, now I'm going to prep the other one. Same thing, we'll go through and check the fit first. Now let's sand that bevel. Helps if you push your drawers back in.
See, any, any kind of a force fit will cause a warp. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with the center here. Okay, we'll let that dry a little bit, and then we'll come back and trim this off, and then put our ply center section in. Then we will be able to unpin. So I'm going to reposition these pins somehow. Maybe I'll just have that free floating. Kind of have to. Listen, I can still do it. Hold on. I'll just put it down below. These have to be repositioned because when I flip the wing, I'm going to put that top cradle on. And these pins will keep the top cradle from going down all the way. I might leave these ones out.
it's clean enough we can cut that end off. Oh, it's cutting around. All right, that's the spars. Now we'll come in and put these pieces in. Okay, so we'll take these pieces and they will get glued in here. Might have to do a little bit of adjustment like on the uh, kit. Always dry fit first. Okay, that's gonna be a nice a nice fit, but I'm going to sand a little bevel right here because there's a glue fillet. I want this to fit perfectly on that spar, and there it is. temporarily put that in place almost messed that those spacers got to be set for me to see here. Hopefully I don't glue that. The fit and finish of a uh, <clears throat> of a scratch built wing is so much better than a kit wing too. All the parts fit just perfectly. Now I'm going to sand the bottom of this to make sure it's flat. Oh, that never even glued.
I'm not even going to worry about doing these things until the wing, the front sheeting's on, the rear uh, trailing edge uh, pieces are on. Because I need those on before I can even adjust these to where they need to be. But uh, they'll turn out good. Okay, now we're going to glue this top uh, joiner in. And I'm going to be putting the glue on it instead of the spar. Once again, I got to try to keep from gluing this piece, the web, on yet because it's not ready to be glued. Now it's ready to be glued. And the chances are I'm going to end up gluing these little shims to it. Maybe. Hopefully not. I think they're raised up enough where I won't. But we'll see. And that'll complete the uh, bottom wing structure anyway, as far as the center section. There's nothing left to do. Everything's flush. Everything feels good. That needs a little bit of adjustment. I'm going to try to get them shims out of there. Cool. It didn't get glued. Neither did that one. Awesome. Alright, so all I got to do, I got to adjust this one. Somehow it, uh, it's not right. I think I might. This is going to require some finesse. I don't want to destroy my rib. Can't use that, it's too thick.
it's pretty good. You'll definitely know if it's right or not once I get the uh, other, once I get the center sheeting on. Okay, so now that I uh, have all the center section in, it's glued securely, and everything else is glued. I repositioned my pins on this leading edge shim. I'm going to unpin the spar, unpin the trailing edge, and we're going to flip the swing over and put these notches down inside the slots that I melted. Should fit perfectly in there. I'm going to leave the shims. Well, the one I have to remake because I glued it to my wing. But I'm going to leave the shims on the spar location so it shims it up. But what I'm going to do is place my trailing edge sheeting and glue that center section in. And when I go to flip this and line up the rib locations, that should be perfectly centered in the, in the wing. So we'll get set up and do that. I'm going to start by unpinning my trailing edges. I'm anxious to see if my, my slots line up just perfectly. They should. We'll soon find out. Okay, and another thing I might run into is uh, that shim that's glued to my wing might be glued to the uh, wax paper, so I might have to put down fresh wax paper. Got to keep track of my pins. I don't want to get any pins in my feet. That might hurt. I'm anxious to see how easy this comes off this cradle. Shouldn't lift right off, and it does. There it is. <laughs> I'll deal with that real quick before I even try to bother flipping it. Well, that's on there. How am I going to do this without breaking my wing? Thanks. Oops, I'm gluing myself to my spar. Not too bad. 
Let's get a smaller sand bar. Sand that just a little. I don't want to. That's pretty good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be happy with that. Not gonna mess with it. All right. So. I need to put some fresh. <coughs> wax paper down so I'm going to move this set it somewhere where I don't glue parts to it got glue on my finger dang it don't want to glue my trailing edges yet they're not ready That means I'm going to have to repin my leading edge shim. Which is fine. Spill anything, let's get it out of the way. Don't really have anything to glue on this except this trailing edge, but I still need to repin these. These are my leading edge shims, so I'm going to repin those. <clears throat> and I'll have to cut a hole in this for those. All this I'm making up because there is no video on how to do this with a you know with an RC ultimate biplane wing so this is all new hopefully it's successful it looks like it's gonna be but you never know So 
So I'll pin this down and then we'll do our trailing edge pieces. Then we'll put our, our shims in. First we got to cut our slots open. We'll put our shims in, glue the trailing edge, line this up upside down over the spar and the rib locations and it should still be I won't be gluing this trailing edge on until I have the the uh, bottom of the or the, it's actually the top of the cradle weighted down on top of the trailing edge and I'll explain that when I get there Alright, that's done. Now we're going to make our trailing edges. Should use my clear ruler for that.
So that's lined up perfectly over the center line. Once I get the pins in, I'll go ahead and glue that center. And now, done with this. Now we'll put the shims back in place. Well, no, we can't. I gotta cut my slots out. Anxious to see how this goes. Now we put the shims in. I only need shims where the spars are. So we're going to place this over the plan. <laughs> yeah.
So the plan is to use these placed perfectly on the wing. Oops. This is going to be awesome. So I'm making sure that that trailing edge is perfect. This is going to make or break it, fellas. This ain't perfect. And the whole wing is going to be messed up. It looks dang good. Before I glue this, I'll bring you around to show you. So basically, all I have to do is glue the trailing edge on just like this. It's weighted down perfectly straight. Once I get that done, we can take the cradle caps off and prepare the, uh, the sheeting, the leading edge sheeting. So let's get to gluing. One thing you're going to need when you glue like this is a flashlight so you can see where your glue's going. You know, I was thinking about it, I have got a long ways to go on this wing yet. Wish it didn't take so long, but, you know, it's just the nature of the beast, I guess. While this glue is drying, we will uh, prep the leading edge sheeting.
thought we should have ran thins the A in here first. Just now thinking about it. That would have got under those ribs real good. So now's the time we prep the leading edge sheeting. The way you do that is you use the bottom of the mold buck. And you just take your sanding bar and just very lightly. You don't need to take a lot of uh, material off. Just to, just to smooth it out. Yeah, see, it don't, it don't take much at all. Whoops. Try not to destroy your sheeting while you do this. And once this is sanded, I'll never sand it again, because that's it. I can trim this end and sand that to the exact angle that goes in that uh, cradle. So that's what I'm going to do now. Totally destroy this because I'm going to sand it to the shape. Because this has to be glued together. Then you just take this and sand it to the shape. Kind of like you do the uh, ribs.
probably not what this is intended for, but it does a good job. And you got tons of, I have tons of excess over here. Perfect. Not sure how you, how you can see it. It's the perfect angle. So that side is done. I'm going to set it there for now. Well, I'll keep it on this thing. Now we'll do the other one the same way. I'm going to keep this end until I get the, the ribs lined up and stuff. Set it over here for now. good so now I'll do the same thing with this center section Let's <laughs> go. 
See, my next trick is going to see how I'm going to get that slot cut for the interplane strut on this thing. Because <laughs> it's not a uh, separate, two separate pieces of balsa. That's going to be the trick. So then now the next thing is to do the shear webs. They're going to be a quarter inch thick here, here. Well, why don't I show you what I'm pointing at? They're going to be a quarter inch thick here and here, eighth inch here, 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 and here. Uh, after that, there's no shear webs. Uh, my thing is, how am I going to do this? I'm going to have to figure out. I'll get back with you. And we have to sand this edge square. And we're going to put a quarter inch cap on this. And wherever there's a hinge location, I'm going to put a 3 8 inch thick block glued to that cap. So that's where that's going to be. Uh, and then I'm going to infill. these sections here with vertical grain balsa wood. That'll really strengthen that up. It'll be so stiff. I have an eighth inch carbon fiber rod going to go on the leading edge to protect the uh, tip of the, uh, well, you know, the leading edge of the wing and for bumps. This is all done. Uh, like I said before, once I get the sheeting all glued, the seams glued together, I'm going to cut a window out on the other side. I'm going to cut a window out, epoxy in that block, put the window back in. I'm going to put some uh, 16th backer, put the window back in and uh, glue it back real nice and neat. And then we'll fill that or something with that. And then we got to make our center sheeting here. Now this center sheeting should look way better than the kitsch center sheeting because it'll be perfect to this wing. We'll find out. So hopefully that's the case. So I'm going to unpin this wing and put these shells on just to give you a preview of what it's going to look like. You know, it's not nothing going to be glued just going to be situated. We'll see. So here's my dilemma. How do I cut that slot without destroying my wing shell or my leading edge shell? I'm going to attempt to freehand one off camera and then uh, bring you back and show you the results. Kind of nervous. But you can see how nice this, that leading edge is going to look. There's no seam here. That will close up whenever this is down, you know, whenever those slots are cut because that's pulling it out. Let's see if I can pick it up and show you the underside. But it kind of, it, it'll match up perfectly. Trying to be careful. I don't want to break anything or, you know. 
but it's a uh, it's gonna be nice looking I just got to figure out those slots once I figure those out I'm golden what I'm thinking about doing is taking some like eighth inch square and kind of back it on either side of that tab so if I end up going a little too big on the slot at least I have something that I can put some filler against uh, that would be my best bet I think I really don't I like everything to be exactly perfect but you know this is a, a new thing for me so I don't know if it's gonna be perfect or not but I'm gonna attempt to uh, do one of these off camera and we'll see be back show you either the disaster or success we'll see well what do you think I devised a plan and that front side is almost dang perfect so now I know when I go to do the other side to go more that way with the cuts instead of this way so when I go to trim the sheeting off, I'm going to have to fill that, which sucks. Man, I might, I might try to fill it with balsa as much as I can. So I am completely happy with the way that looks. Now, after I do the other side, I'll be able to flip this wing over to glue that leading edge sheeting. I'll be able to, because these will be down in the slots. I'll be able to glue the leading edge sheeting in on the flip side. That's awesome. Man, that thing looks good. All right, I'm going to do the other one. Uh, I'm afraid to do it on camera because I'll probably screw it up. So anyway, what, basically all I did, made sure the wing was lined up on the plan form and that the leading edge was pushed all the way back. And I just pressed on, pressed right here, right above that tab. It left an indentation and I just made my lines from the angle of that indentation which worked perfectly so that's what I'm going to do with the other side I'll do it in fast speed so you can at least see me doing it if I screw up I'll show you anyway we'll get that done and then I gotta I gotta make up those uh, uh, shear webs we got to do those before this sheeting can be glued on I believe I think that's how it goes yeah yeah because uh, you have to make you have to slide it down in like this and make your marks with your knife from the other end from that side so all right let's get this other slot made hopefully it goes just as good <laughs> I think I got it figured out. I got a pretty good seam here in the middle now. It'll close up more once I get it all glued down. But right now I got to take these shells back off. I put the, uh, you can see it back in there. I don't know if you'll be able to, but the carbon fiber rod, it's kind of blurry, but it's in there. Let me see if I can. See it? There it is anyway it's back in there uh, 
that helps stiffen up that end. I was get, having trouble with it flexing these the tips of these ribs. Is it going to focus or what? What's the deal? Okay. That's having trouble with it flexing the, as I was straightening it up. It was flexing the tips of those ribs, so I wasn't getting a good seam here. So I put the carbon fiber rod in the center, and it works. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to concentrate on doing those uh, shear webs. And really not sure how I want to do those. I'm thinking I might just do them like the kit. Figure out a way of... Uh, gluing them in without uh, I'm sitting here trying to think and talk at the same time figure out how to glue those in with the wing and the cradle I can't have the, the leading edge on so I'm gonna have to cut like a shim the whole width maybe a one inch a one inch shim the whole width of that spar down and way down the wing I don't know maybe put these I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna do that well I know I can do it I can put do it upside down hold on in case anybody's curious right now at, at this point without the servos in it I can go ahead and set these on top. See how much this is going to weigh. We're at 102 grams. So how many ounces is that? 3.6 ounces for that. And all we got left to put, do for that is that block the two servos and the and the servo wires and uh, the center sheeting so it's not going to be that heavy this is going to be let's let's measure or let's weigh the kit wing real quick see what the kit wing looks like okay the kit wing with the servo that I'm going to be using weighs 12.8 ounces that's 364 grams. Now, keep in mind, it does have the aileron or the ailerons and trailing edges on them, and the center tape. So this will be the point at which I'm going to weigh the lost foam wing. You know, because this still has all the cap strips and it's it's done basically, ready for covering. So we will get the lost foam bottom wing to this point. Set the, sail, set the aileron servos on the scale and a, 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 a aileron extension, servo extension with the uh, trailing edges and the ailerons and we'll see what it weighs. Guaranteed, that lost foam weighing is going to weigh way less than this thing. But we'll see. And here's my setup for doing my shear webs. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because of that in the wing. The, the uh, lost foam wing spar, I believe, is straight across. And to do that would be easier to make those thick shear webs, but I can't do that on this because I'd have to I'd have to sand a a bevel like this as, as well as the shear web being this way and it's that's just too much work. So I'm going to do it this way. Of course, I'm going to have wax paper down, you know, so that I don't glue my wing to that shim. So I'm going to get set up, get the wax paper down, get these out of the way before they get destroyed. And I'm going to cut some uh, shear webs. So we'll get set up and do that. Okay, I'm set up to do the deed. I got my trailing edge perfectly lined up, centered on the uh, cradle. And on this side, I have my wax paper down so I won't glue 
my shear web or my wing to my shims. I'm only putting shims here to, I think here, I'll have to check the plans. But uh, I got it weighed down. So it should, once I get these shear webs in there, it should be locked in straight. And then we can work on putting that le molded leading edge on and trimming it to the spar. This is going to be awesome. So let me get set up. I'm gonna, I'll put you on this side. I'll be over there cutting the shear webs, but you know, that's, that's basic stuff, you know, just measure and cut. I believe they're all gonna be about an inch width. I think that's an inch I'll measure. Here's a uh, measuring thing, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna make them all an inch. They'll be a little bit under an inch, but that's fine. That'll work for me. And uh, once we get these glued in, we'll work on them leading, leading edge molds. So I'll put you in fast speed as well. Okay, shear webs are done. Next step is to prep these uh, leaning edge shells with the carbon fiber rod, because that's gonna go in there too, to go into this wing. So we'll see how that goes. My biggest concern is that seam right there. I, I want to make sure it's non-existent. I might have to sand a little bit off the slot to get it to scoot in a little bit if I need to. And if I do, I do. It's no big deal. Anyway, I'm glad this is done. Now, I'm going to take it off and see how much stiffer that made it. It should have made it way stiffer. Well, um... I have an issue. As perfect as that looks, I have to tear it apart. I put the shear webs in before gluing the leading edge mold on. There's no way to access for glue. Dad gummit. So, I'm going to have to cut them all out. After I do the leading edge sheeting, I'll just put them on the back side, which it's only 1 16th, so it's not going to look that bad. But, daggummit, it was, everything was going perfect. And now, I have to tear them out. Oh, well, live and learn. All I'm going to do is cut a, a slice and just break them out. I'm not gonna bother cleaning it up because it's gonna be inside the mold or inside the shell. So yeah, it'll be another gram or two weight of glue in there, but dang it, that really upsets me. I, I wish I would've thought about that. I, I, I never thought, dang it. Oh well. So I guess we're gonna move on to the leading edge mold as soon as I get these ripped out of here. No sense filming that. I'll uh, get back to you when we're ready to do the leading okay. edge. Okay, I'm going to start off by getting these uh, carbon fiber rods glued in, glued onto the wing tips. Uh, so I'm going to use some pinage and stuff like that. I wonder if I should try to bevel that.
I don't know, maybe. Let's try it. That way when it when it glues in the center there, it'll be nice and solid. feel like I'm centered. It felt weird to me. There we go. That's centered. I'll take that. Now back to business. Alright, so basically, uh, this is not, those aren't exact eighth inch uh, notches in the front. So, I just wanted some, you know, some kind of protection there. So if I hit in between a rib, it's not going to bust out because it'll it will completely bust out that entire section. So that's why I'm doing this. Sounds like a turkey call. So I'm just going to put a dot, a CA, in between each one of these. Uh, 
it takes care of that. Just double checking on my ribs. Okay, now I'm just gonna put a dot on each, just a small dot, just to hold it in place. I'm telling me this is going to be a long video. Notice every time I do any gluing on this thing, I've got it weighted down to the cradle. That ensures the perfect straightness. is on okay uh, let that cure a little bit and I'll be back I just want to make sure that when I'm putting them molds on that nothing's gonna break free or or slide out or whatever so we'll let that cure I was able to get my shear was pretty well cleaned off they don't look too bad but it is what it is. I might use my Dremel to trim these carbon fiber rods off because <laughs> I know if I take a hacksaw or whatever to it, it's going to tear up that rib. Uh, and all I have is a sanding drum on it right now. All right, so I'll be back in a couple minutes, let that cure, and then we'll take this thing back off of the cradle and put a shell on and we have to tack it 
on the leading edge in certain places like two or three places so when we go to put it on the cradle we can glue or we can trim the uh, the sheet to the spar that's what the next step is well I regret to inform you we're over an hour and 40 minutes so far so we're going to have to end this one and we'll pick up where we left off in episode 14. Uh, made some great progress. As you can see, uh, we got that the slots made for the uh, interplane strut ribs. I thought I was going to completely destroy that, but it turned out pretty good. Made a mistake. That happens, you know, you, you put the shear webs on before you had, before you can... Uh, or you're supposed to because you got to get in there to get the glue done but next episode we'll get these leading edge trimmed to the uh, spar get them glued on do the center section get our cap strips on and do the uh, we got a quarter inch cap that's going to go on the trailing edge we got to glue that on do our trailing edges and our ailerons we should be able to get all that done in the next episode. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. This thing is going to be sweet. I weighed the lost foam wing, as you see it here, with the trailing edges, the servos, the extensions, and it's at 8.4 ounces. That's with the servos in there. I think the, uh, the kit wing was something like 12 ounces almost. So that's a, it's a huge weight savings. And you get a nicer finish because this, this is all molded. There's no uh, hard balsa leading edge with a seam there, you know. But uh, it's going to look really nice when it's done. So, hope you enjoy the content. And if you do, please be sure and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of future episodes of this build series. And be sure and like and share my videos. I really appreciate that. Until next time, thanks for watching.